One, two, three, four. Ooh, too loud, too loud, too loud. Yeah, I don't want to peop get people, to w if, if they want to sleep, I want them to sleep. <laughs> All right. Well, it's so good being with you once again. I tell you, I, uh, I was not sure what Sunday I was supposed to be here. Is that ringing or is that just me? It's just the monitor ringing. It is okay. It's okay here. The what now? The monitor. The monitors? Okay. We're later there. All right. I, um, no, really, it sounds like it's. Yeah, it's coming on right now. Testing one, two, three, four. Can you back it off a bit for me? I appreciate that so much. Okay? All right. I want you to turn to the book of Matthew. By the way, I have a grandson named Matthew. He has taken his father for Father's Day up to San, Di San Francisco. <laughs> and so Matthew is there, but his book is still in the Bible. Amen. <laughs> testing one, two, three, four. Testing, testing, testing. Okay. And uh, now that's much better. Testing. 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 Whoops. Testing. Test two, whoa, now, okay, let's give it a little bit there. Thank you, thank you. Get my glasses on. So my son is in San Francisco with his son, Matthew. And my son's name is David. And of course he knows what David means. The word David means Beloved of God, amen. <clears throat> so if you've got that name, that's what you are. You are beloved of God. And uh, there sh if there, I have another grandson named David, and he said he was going to be here this morning. David, are you here? No? Oh, I'm so sorry. Because he had his lady friend. <laughs> it's uh, Allegra is her name. And I wanted to introduce Allegra to you this morning. But we'll do it another time. Wonderful young lady. And uh, anyway, I finished about five or six sermons on the Lord's Prayer. You know, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, et cetera, et cetera. And I love the, what is called the uh, Sermon on the Mount. And that's Matthew 5, 6, and 7. 111 verses. I love that particular group. And so, don't tell him I said this, but I called your beloved pastor <laughs> and asked him, would it be okay if I would do a walkthrough, a, a preach through on, the, on Matthew 5, 6, and 7? And he said, 
Of course not. Go do it, right? Amen? Did I hear that? All right. So if, if it isn't what you like, we know who to ask. All right. Um, I have to tell you that uh, I'm being helped in this process by some very special people. One is Stephen Diane Leal, who live, um, let me read it up here, near um, Stockton. Anybody know where Stockton is? You've been up there, okay. They're living there, would you believe? They were raised there, but that's another story. And so they're helping to do research for the sermons that I'll be doing. And then I have a very wonderful lady, even though I married her and her husband, <laughs> we had a good time, and they're still together. They live down in uh, South Haven, Mississippi. So, and she has such a gift for looking up things. And it's something that I need because since I have been not too well, I've given away a lot of my good uh, Bible study books and all that kind of thing. And so the main thing that I have to work with right now is my beloved's, my Sandra D's Bible. So that's what I'm doing this morning. And one other thing before I get going, Steve and Diane went with Sandra and I when we went to Israel several years ago. And so when I talk about where this sermon was made, and I'll read the more details there from chapter 5. Well, let me just go ahead and read it now. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on the mountain. And after he sat down, the disciples came to him. He opened his mouth and began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. And the last verse we'll be working at this morning is verse 5. Blessed are the gentle, for they shall inherit the earth. Father, this is your day. We are your people. We're in your house examining your word. Lord, I pray that you would bless us as we begin this wonderful journey through this amazing sermon that was done on the hillside. Speak to our hearts, O oh God. Guide us because we need the guidance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And all God's people said, did, did they say amen? Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. I, I love this passage. I love the blesseds. Blessed, blessed, blessed. But there's one verse, and that's verse three that I have a problem with and I was really studying and calling people up and the verse says blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven and my question is what does it mean for us to be poor in spirit that doesn't mean that we're supposed to go around oh poor me 
like the little dog. No. And I began to look at it, began to think about it. And I talked to a couple of people like Deb Kobe there in South Haven. <coughs> And she sent me a quote from Billy Graham. <laughs> now, I can't talk like Billy Graham. <laughs> I wish I could. But I will read like Billy Graham would read. When he read the scripture, Billy said, what did he mean? Simply this. We must be humble in our spirits. If you put the word humble in place of the word poor, you will understand what he meant. Isn't that beautiful? It gives us an understanding of that. Blessed are the humble in spirit. In other words, when we come to God, we must realize our own sin and our spiritual emptiness and poverty. We must not be self-satisfied or proud in our hearts, thinking we don't really need God. If we are, God cannot bless us. Listen to this, James 4, 6. God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Let's read that again. God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. So here we are. Put that away. Thank you, Deb. I appreciate it. Now, the world doesn't say that about being humble. The world says, hey, I'm somebody. Look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. That's what the world says. But that isn't what God said to say, did he? Blessed are the humble in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. In other words, if you want to really See God work in your life. You and I both have to come to the place where we say, Lord, help us understand what it means to be humble. Because being humble doesn't mean being stupid or frail or anything else. It means, God, you're amazing. You are something else. And by the way, don't tell the choir I said this, okay? We don't want them to. But just between the two of us, I love to come here every time I preach, or even if I wouldn't preach, because I could hear that choir saying in the the instruments and stuff that are involved. I mean, you guys really know how to bless a soul. So thank you, but don't tell them I said that. We don't want them to, to feel like they're really something, even though they are really something. Remember, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. And then the verse 4 said, Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Were well, you ready for this? You're looking at a preacher that's in the process of healing through being mourning, M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G, the loss of my beloved wife last October the 22nd, I believe it was, I got up in the middle of the night and walked in, and she was laying there, looked 
not looking at all, but just very quiet. She had passed away. We got a nurse there, and the nurse checked her. And so even though my wife and I had lived as husband and wife for 65 years, that June 18th, no more. I'll see her in heaven. I carry her Bible when I preach. That's what this is about. But I don't have her. And I mourn her. Every once in a while, I'll think about something. Well, I need to tell Sandra about that. <laughs> and I can't because she's not there. We're going to have a memorial service for her on October 22nd of this year down in North Hollywood, First Southern. And we're gonna give her appreciation. But then I noticed that yesterday, no, excuse me, what was Friday? Was it the 18th? Yes. Am I right, everybody? Yes. Amen? I see. Okay. Guess what the 18th was? It was the same day we got married in Barrickville, West Virginia in June 18th. And uh, 1955. And this past Friday was number 66, if, if my darling had been here. So I, I was hurting because I missed her. I have her remains. And I look at them every day and I say, oh God, is there anything I can do to bring her close again? And of course, God doesn't say a word. He leaves it to me. And so when I say, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted, I want to tell you it's the truth. Now, the world says, what does the world say when you're trying to deal with grief and stuff? The world says, get over it, dummy. <laughs> you're not going to bring back somebody. What are you going to do? Go to the graveyard and dig them up again? They're dead. Die. Die. Marry two or three others. Get blessed because of excitement or something. But be very careful what you do when you say things like that. Let me tell you a true story. Several years ago, several years ago, I was in my office, in my church office, and a gentleman called and said, can I come by? I want to talk to you about you doing my wedding. And I said, sure. He wasn't a member of the church, so somebody had recommended me to him that I didn't make people go to sleep when I married them. <laughs> it's not true when I bury them, but that's another story. Yeah. And so we sat down and talked, and I said, well, uh, tell me what your deal is. And he said, well, my wife passed away several months ago, and I found another beautiful lady, and I want to marry her. And I said, well, let me tell you what I require. In fact, buddy, I wrote a booklet called Get Preparing for the 50-Year Marriage. And I tell people what they have to do. 
I counsel with them several sessions. They have to work through a workbook proposition. They have to work through where is your mind, where, what, what, are, what do you really care for, both of you? How are you going to deal with this? How are you going to deal with that? And this old boy, he was older than me. He looked at me and said, Preacher! I didn't know what to say. He said, that's more work than buying a car. I said, yeah. <laughs> I sure hope so. And he said, well, forget it. I'll find somebody else to do it. Okay. I'm not looking for business. But what breaks my heart is this guy who felt he was doing the smart thing, who felt he'd gotten over his mourning and his grief, married the lady, and within a period of about five or six months, she had taken every dime that he had in the bank. She ripped him off to nothing, but that wasn't all. She set it up so he would have to go into a nursing home where they would have to take care of him. In other words, you don't really have it. You don't really have it together. And that's the way he ended up. So guys, when you're grieving, let it happen. Lean into it. If you have to weep, go ahead. It's all right. The Bible says what? Weep with those who weep. In other words, if you see somebody hurting, you say, what can we do? What, how can we help you? Is there anything I can do to be a blessing to you? I once had a class, I think I maybe have mentioned it here before, in the church in North Hollywood with women who had been abused as they were growing up. Most of the time it was their father that had done horrible things to them. And we would get together on a Thursday evening and, and share and bear one another's burdens. And did we cry? Yeah. Yes, we did. Not only does the Bible say to do that, but if you really love people, you're going to weep with those who weep. You're going to care for what they're going through. So we got through that. Well, Verse 5 is beautiful. Blessed are the gentle. Oh, thank you. Wow. <laughs> Blessed are the gentle. Notice, if you happen to be of a particular persuasion, I did not say Gentile. <laughs> Jesus said... Blessed are the gentle, for they shall inherit the earth. Now the world says, you got to be tough. We live in a tough world. You got to know how to, I, I know people in their 20s that are carrying three or four pieces of artillery around with them hidden because they're afraid of what they're having to face. It's such a sad thing. And people are saying, you got to be tough. But that's not what the Bible said. It said, blessed are the Gentile, the gentle, for they shall inherit the earth. 
And I want to give you a scripture. Ephesians 4, 29 to 32. Read that. We, we may come back to it uh, the next time we preach, whenever that is. It is an excellent passage. It talks about how we're to deal with others. And then, because I see beautiful people coming up here and <laughs> saying, Preacher, it's time to shut up. Thank you. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. The world says, I want pleasure. I drove by with a, a bunch, bunch of people that I'm not related with, and we said, we drove by some things had, that were happening in Van Nuys. One was a place where they had dirty pictures. What a horrible thing. But you know what? If you, humble, if you hunger and thirst for righteousness, you're going to be satisfied because you will have done what God said to do. And he said he would walk with us. Father, thank you for this time. Thank you for your love. Thank you for all that you do for us. Thank you for your promises. Lord, we just claim them with all of our hearts. And be with us, Lord, as we continue month by month walking through the Sermon on the Mount. Lord, may we be touched and strengthened and blessed, blessed, and may we help others as well. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. when I get through too. <laughs> now I've got to get out of here. Praise the Lord. So why don't we give Pastor Charles again a big round of appreciation for his faithfulness, declaring the truth of God's word without compromise. We need them. We need them today. Praise God. Praise the Lord. We don't want to close our worship celebration we're giving people an opportunity to make Jesus the Lord and the Savior of their lives so even as Pastor Charles speaks of even the very first part of his message blessed are the poor in spirit blessed are the humble in spirit or blessed are those who know their spiritual poverty it is the starting point of salvation when you realize that there's nothing in us and about us that would be qualified to that heavenly real estate in the presence of God our Father. To know that we are bankrupt spiritually, we cannot. I cannot even afford the real estate right now. I mean, just I, I cannot afford California land and house. How much more the heavenly, heavenly dwelling we have. But it is the start of it. I know that there's a lot of debate whether or not Sermon on the Mount or the Beatitude has something to do with salvation, but definitely could apply. It may not necessarily be just for it, but definitely could apply to that. So if you're watching us today and you want to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, to experience this wonderful life with Him, 
You may be here today. You haven't yet started this journey. It's a wonderful life to live. But it starts with the humility of the spirit. To realize that we are spiritually bankrupt. And to realize that we've failed him. Do not a lot of people feel convicted and feel sorry for the things they do that hurt the heart of our Father. But when you start mourning for those sins, we know that what you have to do is to come to Him next. You mourn for it. It says, Blessed are the meek, blessed are the humble, for they shall inherit the earth. Are we humble enough to say, Lord, I need you? Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Lord, I want the righteousness that you afford those who place their trust in you. So if you're that person today, you really want to have that relationship with Jesus, it can be had. He's already offered it. All we have to do is receive it. So those of you watching uh, on the internet and those of us who may be doing this today, you may not have done it yet before. Get today is the day of your salvation, 2 Corinthians 6 2. And you do that only by simple prayer, as long as you pray sincerely from the bottom of your heart. Just go ahead and bow your heads. I'm going to lead you in prayer. Those of you who have done this before, say this, follow this as well to encourage those doing this for the first time, making the most important decision that anybody here on earth or in this side of eternity could make. Jesus, go ahead and follow me in this prayer from your heart. Dear God in heaven, I'm so grateful to you for speaking to me about my status spiritually. I recognize that I'm bankrupt and that I cannot save myself because I fall short of your glory. Father, I open my heart to you today asking for forgiveness for every sin I have committed against you. I am so sorry. Please forgive me. I invite you now to come as I place my full dependence on you for my salvation and I bow my heart bow my knee to you as my Lord thank you for saving me thank you for giving me a new beginning thank you for inviting me to a life with you this I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit and in Jesus name Everybody say amen. Praise God. Again, we, did, we, we, just, we just want to do what the Bible says. Everybody just go again. Just rejoice. They just, we we're believing that some people are receiving the Lord and will receive the Lord. If you're watching this one year, one week, one day, probably 10 years, 20 years from now, if the Lord tarries and you're making that decision, the Bible tells us that the angels of heaven are rejoicing and just having this great party. Because they know the importance of that decision that you've just made. So, again, congratulations. If you're any one of those who've done it, let us know. Let us know so we could rejoice with you. And we could help you in this journey as well as we journey together. Okay? In this beautiful Christian pilgrimage. God bless you. Congratulations. Congratulations to you.